In the previous video, we covered the details of convolutional node layers. Very often, we will add say pooling layers right after the convolutional layers. So in this video, let's go through the details of pooling layers and see which types of pooling layers that we can use in TensorFlow. Let's get started. Convolutional layer is very effective. A very quick recap, stacking convolutional layers in deep learning models allows layer closer to the input learns the lower features like the lines and then layers deeper to in the in the models to learn the higher order or more abstract features like the shapes and also specific objects. However, there is a limitation uh, in the feature maps output of the convolutional layer, which is, the, which is that they record the precise positions of the features in the inputs. This means that small movements in the positions of the features in the image will result in different feature maps. This can happen with recoppings, um, rotations, shiftings, and any other major changes to increase the, um, to increase the number of input image or to the input image. Uh, common ways to adjust this problem is to add a pooling layer right after a convolutional layer so as to downsample the features. There's two uh, advantage or there's two usage of using the pooling layers. First, it is used to reduce the dimensions of the feature maps hence the number of the parameters to learn and also the amount of the computational performed in the network. In this case, it could help to avoid the overfitting issue, especially when we have a very deep network. And then the second thing that it does is to summarize the features present in the regions of the feature maps generated by a convolutional layers. Therefore, Further operations are performed on summarized features so as to make the models more robust to the variations in the positions of the image or the, of the features in the input image, in the input image, namely translational invariance. Therefore, it will help to avoid the overfitting issues and also translations invariance issues. Pooling layer is specified, so they do not learn. Um, there are two common functions uh, used in the pooling operations that include the maximum pooling, which is used to calculate the maximum value for each batch, each patch of the feature maps. On the other hand, there is a FH pooling, which is to calculate the FH values for each patch on the feature maps. Let's take a look on the maximum pooling. Maximum pooling is a pooling operation that lets the maximum element from the regions of the feature maps covered by the filter. <clears throat> Therefore, the output after the maximum pooling layer would be a feature map containing the most prominent features of the features maps. Let's assume a maximum pooling with a filters two by two and strides two by two that is applied to by eight by eight inputs. And then you can see that for each maximum pool, the operations will compute the maximum value and then put it into the maximum pool. And by doing so for each pool, we will get a done sampled four by four outputs. And then, you know, uh, very kind remarks on that is that um, the stride is very often equals to the pool size. So that is effectively, is effectively equals to a reduction in height and width by a factor of two in width and two in height. This is a very effective way to reduce the, to downsample the input uh, by, by the factor of two in this example. <clears throat> On the other hand, for the FH pooling, the FH pooling is a pooling operation that retains the FH value from the regions of the feature maps covered by the filter, filters. Therefore, the outputs after FH pooling layers would be a feature max contains the FH value of the features from that feature map. 
let's assume an average pooling with a filter 2x2 two two, strive 2x2s two two is applied to 8x8 eight eight matrix. For each uh, FH pooling, the operations will compute the FH values, and by doing so, for each pooling, uh, for each pool, we will get a down samples 4 by 4 output. Again, it's because we have a strife equals to 2 by 2, and that means or or the strife is equals to the pool size. So in that case, we will down sample it by a factor of 2 in the width and also by a factor of 2 in the height. Now let's take a look at on the examples on uh, for these for this maximum pool, pooling or the FH pooling. Tensorflow Clarus provides 1D layers, 2D layers, and 3D layers for the maximum pooling and also FH pooling to match with different types of the convolutional layers. Say for example, uh, 1D pooling is used to match with the convolutional 1D, which is applied in previous layer, and 2D pooling layers is used to match with the convolutional 2D, which is applied in the previous layer. And 3D pooling layer is used to uh, match with the convolutional 3D, which is applied in the previous layer. There are few commonly used arguments that include the pool size, stripes, and also padding. Pool size is used to specify the height and width of the pooling windows. And here you can see that this blue square is the pooling window. Blue square, this is the pooling windows. And then stripes, um, that is used to specify how far the pooling windows move for each pooling step. So say for example, this one is 2 by 2. That means we have a pool size windows that is a square, that is a 2 by 2 here, or you can call it a filters, that is a 2 by 2 here. And then stripes, 2 by 2. 2 means that strives to the right by 2, and then for this 2 means that you, it has to strive it down by 2 as well. So you can see that these square windows will move 2 steps in here, and then later on 2 step, down, two step right here, and then 2 step down here. And then finally it will move 2 steps right again. So this is how we can define the pool size and also the stripes. And then for padding, there's two ways that we can set it for. So that includes the valid and the other one, and the other way is same. Valid means no padding. In that case, the size of the output and input will not be the same. And then for the same padding, which means that we will pack, this, pack it with the zero evenly to the left, right, up, or down of the input so that the output have the same height and width dimensions as the input. So in our previous examples, the padding is valid because you can see that the number of output is not equal to the number of the input, I mean in terms of the shape. But of course, if we want if we want them to be the same, we can just change it to a same padding. Now let's uh, build models to see how we can apply the maximum pooling and also the FH pooling. First thing first, we need to um, build the sequential models and of course we need to ex import the layers as well that includes the convolutional to the maximum pooling to the flatten and also the dense. Let's run this out. Let's assume we have a 32 by 32 uh, RGB image. And we wanted to create a 64 filters um, with a 3 by 3 kernel size, which shift one pixel at a time. And then the, the output will have the same height and width dimensions as the input, and is also activated by the value. So for this one, let's build a sequential model first, and then we want to add a convolutional layers to match it match with what I've just mentioned um, right here. That includes the filters equals to 64, and then the kernel size is equals to 3 by 3's kernel size, which shift one pixel at a time. That means we need to set the stripes equals to 1 by 1. 
and then for the paddings because we want the output has the same height and width dimensions as the input so we are going to pack it with the same argument and then we want to activate activate it with the valued activation functions and because this is the first layer we also need to specify the input shapes that is the 32 by 32 because that is a rgb image we have free channel so let's run this out now we just add these uh, convolutional layers now let's add the pooling layers right after these convolutional layers and then for this time for maximum poolings we would like to set the filters equals to two by twos strides equals to two by twos and that is applied to these 32 by 32 outputs from previous convolutional 2d remember because we set the same paddings here so the output is equals to the input shapes right here but because we have the filters equals to 64 so the channel the rgb free uh, the uh, their input that is the uh, 32 by 32 by 3 this is the rgb channels will be changed to 64 because the number of the filter and then we, what we're going to do is that we want to apply a filter 2x2 two two with stripes 2x2 two two to these 32 by 32 and by 64 output shapes and we would like to done sample it by a factor of 2 and for these reasons we have the maximum poolings 2d and then we have the pooling side with pooling window size equals to 2x2 two two, and stripe equals to 2x2s two and then the paddings equals to valid so we can reduce the number of the outputs in terms of the size by doing so you can see that we just get a done sample 60 by 64 60 by 60 output here because this is not learning anything so you can see that there's no parameters over here sometimes we might not want to use the maximum pooling uh, we might want to use a average pooling in that case what we need to do is just to of course we just need to import the average pooling to the and then just change it to a FH poolings 2D and then it will help us to use the FH poolings 2D layers instead of the maximum pooling layers but I will just leave it to you right here great now we are able to form a convolutional convolutional base that includes the convolutional layers and then adding a pooling layer right after a convolutional layers so as to reduce the dimensions of the feature maps and also um, to avoid the translations invariance issues and then after that of course we can continue to set up these two layers stacking with another set of the convolutional poolings continues to build our features learning base now we should be able to build these features learnings layer and in the next video let's learn how we can connect these features learning base to a deep shallow classifications neural network with the use of a flattened layer so see you in the next video bye bye